If your W210's brake lights are always on, has trouble shifting out of park, and has the BAS, ESP, and ABS malfunction on the display, then it is most likely that your brake light switch has failed. So this is a common issue on these cars, and this is the most common culprit for that issue. Of course, this is not the only thing that could be causing it. This is one of the easiest and cheapest things to replace first. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. So here is the part number. It is A0015456409. And there are two different versions of this. This is one of them. So make sure you get the right one for your car. The best way to determine the right one is to put your year, make, and model into a parts website and it should get you the right one. It's more accurate if they require a VIN, so it might be best to go to a dealer and ask for the part number that applies to your VIN number. So we, here we have the car switched onto the on position, but the engine not running and we'll see if the brake lights are on all by themselves. So this is one of the symptoms that happens. And of course, when the car is on, your brake lights are always on, which looks dumb and causes the malfunctions. Another issue is if you have your foot on the brake and you try to shift it into drive, it won't let you. For some reason now, my car is letting me but before it would not it would be stuck like this so it seems like my car actually fixed that issue but the lights are still on another symptom that you will see is that the abs and bas esp light will be on and you also have a malfunction in the center display once you turn the car on that's when it will kind of flash and sometimes it's not immediate sometimes it happens after a little bit of driving sometimes it is immediate and sometimes it happens as soon as you hit your foot on the brake if you need to move your car and your shifter stuck in park and you can't get out all you need is a object that is like a stick or a pencil there's this little slot right here. You just go ahead and stick it in there and go straight down, make sure you don't angle it. You go straight down until you feel you push a button and then you can shift the shifter without having to do anything else. This releases the lock that prevents it from moving. The brake light switch is located under the lower dash right above the brake pedal right there. So we will have to remove this panel up here, which is just a couple of Phillips screws. We also need to remove this vent, which is also just another Phillips screw. And this is just held in my clips and it'll come straight down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So the screws you'll see are right there and they go all along. Okay, so once you have the vent cover out there, there's one screw there, one screw there, and one more right there. This is all loosened up. So now we can gently kind of stick your fingers right here and pull, try not to break the clips. They're very, you see, they're very easy to break. And there's a couple more here that you kind of have to do that. Just be very gentle. And then eventually this will come right out. And then this is a little different. I think you go up or down like that. Now it's out. So now we can access the brake light switch which is all the way up there. You see those two connectors right there. That's the brake light switch. Okay, so to get to the brake light switch, you see there's a little tab on that side. I'm gonna twist, push it in and twist it. Which this is a little cramped in here. So we gotta twist it and push that tab in. So it's gonna be a little hard to do on the camera, but I'm gonna do it off camera and then show you. Okay, so there it is loosened. So I just pushed that tab in and twisted it clockwise and it came right out. So now we have to remove the connectors and swap it out with a new one. While you're removing the connectors, be sure to pay attention to where they connect to. There is a top and bottom here. So just make sure that you remember which one's which. So we'll see this one with the two wires goes on the bottom. So this is the correct orientation right here with the tab on the side. So tab's supposed to be on the left side right there facing the front of the car. The two connectors go on the bottom, the three connectors go on top. So just make sure to make a note of that. And if you have a different brake light switch, then you won't have to listen to this. This is what this version of the brake light switch looks like. So the other one is slightly different. The connectors are different. Here we can compare the old and new. So see that the old one is not pushed as far out. So this could be causing an issue that it's not retracting all the way. And you can also see that the white plastic is faded to yellow. So if we were to push this out, yeah, it doesn't even want to go out. So this is definitely defective and there's a new one. So let's go ahead and put it back in and see if it fixes the problem. Okay, so now we're ready to install the new brake light switch. So just remember the position of the wires. The one with the two wires goes on the bottom, the one with three goes on top and make sure that tab is pointing to the left and then we can stick it back in. So put it in this way and then twist it until it clicks into place. Okay, so I have the connectors connected correctly. That's where it goes. Twist it up like that first, line those tabs, and then twist it counterclockwise. So once you get it pushed in all the way, twist counterclockwise, snaps into place, and that's all there is to it. So now all that's left to do is put the dash back together and see if it works. So just be sure to pay attention to these hooks. They go upwards 
They go to the side. If your clips aren't broken, they'll be going back into place. And then these other hooks up top will hold the dash into place. And you got your three screws plus the vent. When reinstalling the lower dash, be sure to line up the little tab up there. It's supposed to sit on top of that so it doesn't flop around. And then make sure you line up all these. These can be a little tricky. And then these will go in kind of a little hard too. So you gotta kind of help it go over that ledge. And other than that, it goes on pretty simple. Put back in your Phillips screws, put back in your vent. And the vent also goes in a specific way. You have to kind of start like that, like a door. Go in like that. Also, the screw actually does index a certain way. As you can see, it's a square and a rectangle. So make sure it's oriented the right way. So just one, two, three Phillips screws and we're done. Once you've reattached your lower dash, we are done. So the only tool we need was a Phillips screwdriver. That's how simple this job is. So now let's go see if it works. Okay, so let's see if it works. So foot off the brake, shifter's locked. That's how it's supposed to be. Foot on the brake, shifter is open. So shifter is good. Let's check the brake lights. So in position two, if the brake light switch has failed, the lights will be on. So let's go look. And we got no brake lights on in the back, which is good news. If the brake light switch was the reason for the ABS, BAS, ESP failure, that will also fix that. So you have to turn the car on and drive it a bit to make sure. Sometimes the car will have to cycle through. You have to drive it for a couple miles to let the computer resync. If that doesn't fix it, then you got another issue, but this usually will fix it. Well, I hope you found the video helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below. Part numbers will be in the description as well for both versions of the brake light switch. Thank you for watching.